All right. I'm going to comment on something now that I, I've been watching this story develop here for the past week. And I've been waiting to say something on it because it, <laughs> both sides are, are have issues. And I, I wanted to see what was going to be the one thing that would make me talk about it. Because I felt there was much to do about nothing. But. Pokemon Go Fest happened in Chicago like last week or something like that. I apologize for not knowing all the 100% exact details here uh, because it, this, this story didn't really matter to me too much until an update to it today. But it kind of, it was supposed to be like this first annual uh, giant meetup of, you know, as many people that as wanted to come to a park, and there was going to be, like, an event with a stage, which there was, and the CEO came out, John Hinkey, and got laughed at and booed off the stage, uh, because people could not connect to the Pokemon Go servers during the, the event, or at least they couldn't connect for a large chunk of the event, and, you know, so they couldn't participate in the raid battles, and the getting of the legendaries, and all that great stuff. Now, uh, Niantic, you know, did apologize for all these issues. Uh, they extended the radius of, of the spawns and the raids and all that stuff to two miles to allow people to spread out. And then they also gave people full refunds on their ticket prices, plus $100 worth of in-game currency. And for their part, Niantic pretty much did what you would expect a company, maybe even beyond what you would expect a company to do, because they didn't have to refund. They didn't have to, because every, everything they promised was a chance to. And you still had a chance to connect to the server and get your legendaries. But it was, like, it was so hard to do that... Uh, they didn't want to upset the player base even more than they already were. I mean, when the CEO comes out and you have thousands of people booing him because they can't connect to the game that they came to play at this event and paid to come play, it's understandable. So, like, I, uh, on one hand, I commend Niantic for how they responded to this situation. Uh, at the other hand, I understand why people were upset, but... You know, that they explained, you know, when they explained why, uh, when Niantic came out and did a blog post about why these issues happened, it became really obvious to me. Like, I, I knew as an onlooker why these issues happened, okay? We're talking about people using their mobile devices, right? If, you, if you've ever gone to a sporting event, you will know they're just in, in a stadium of, say, 18,000 people. You know, you're at an NBA game or, or something to, of that nature. Uh, if you bust out your cell phone and you are not on Wi-Fi, and let's say there's just no Wi-Fi available and everyone's just using their cellular networks, you will have a hard time connecting to the Internet. Uh, and you might not even be able to connect at all. And this happens anytime there's a large gathering of people all trying to use their cell phones. Because what happens is the waves get congested because all these cell phones basically communicate on extremely similar wavelengths wirelessly. So when you have so many of these devices together, they interfere with each other and cause connection issues. And as Niantic put it, there was a congestion issue. There was just too much people trying to access things at once and it was causing, uh, you know, it was basically shutting people's internet out, sh shutting people out from being able to access the servers. And this isn't like entirely Niantic's fault per se, because this is just what happens when you get a large group of people together, all trying to use their cellular data at the same time. Now, obviously, in hindsight, you know, they should have foresaw this because this is a well-known issue when you gather thousands of people together using cell phones. So, you know, they should have set up several different wireless internet hubs from several different carriers that would have allowed people to connect. And, you know, while it wouldn't fix everything, some people could use their cellular data while some people could be connected to different internet networks. And then they would have been able to play Pokemon Go, no problem. So it, it, it's kind of something that Niantic is at fault for not anticipating these issues and having a better setup in place. Uh, I assume if they do this again next year, they're going to <laughs> really anticipate this, uh, you know, extend the, the radius that people can play and, you know, ha have Wi-Fi hotspots all over the place or Wi-Fi hotspots by the raid battle areas at least uh, to alleviate some of the strain on cellular networks and communication of, of all that data. So they're going to have a better setup. Shame on Niantic for not having a better setup for this case. Uh, but again, you know, it, it's completely understandable. Since they didn't have wireless internet hub set up, there really wasn't anything Niantic could do about this. It was going to happen anyways. There was going to be issues. Uh, and even with wireless hub setups, there were still going to be issues. And I think anybody, 
I think anyone who goes through an event like this needs to understand that going in. You're going to an event where there's going to be thousands upon thousands of people trying to use their cell phones. You have to understand there's going to be issues with that. Uh, I, I know there's going to be issues with that. I've experienced it at sports stadiums uh, before they all started getting Wi-Fi. So, anyways, and even w- even with the Wi-Fi, it's still really, really slow because everyone's connected to it, right? It's so many devices connected. Uh, but at least, you know, it does work and you can get through to the network. It just takes a little bit. Now, that's all fine and dandy. I, I think Niantic's response was appropriate and you know, the, the, that should be open shut case. People are upset. Maybe they won't come again, you know, if, if they do this event again. Or they understand, they appreciate that, you know, the free legendaries and, 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 the, and the money and all the stuff that Niantic did. And, you know, they'll give them a second chance to get it right next year. And I know this builds off frustration that people had with the app a year ago. And some people still have. Uh, but I swear... A lot of people that I ever see complain about the app. So it was like me and 300 people were out at the park trying to do this thing. I'm like, 300 people gathering together trying to use a cell phone. Yeah, that's not going to cause any problems. <laughs> so, again, avoid large gatherings of people when you're trying to play Pokemon Go. Like, it, it's not... It's an internet uh, congestion issue with cellular networks. It's really not Pokemon Go's problem. They can't fix your cellular network. They are not Verizon. They are not AT and T. They can't do anything about this, right? They literally, I mean, they're they're not going to start setting up their own Wi-Fi hotspots the world over. That would be so expensive to do. Uh, you could argue there should be free Wi-Fi everywhere, like there is in some countries, but again, that's not the case here in North America. So. I wasn't going to talk about this because I, I just figured this is just everyone's being stupid. I, I understand. I'm not saying I'm on Niantic's side because they should have planned for this better, especially with people paying money to come. But I understand. I, I appreciate Niantic's response, their honesty about it, uh, jumping ahead of it and giving people, you know, what I feel is even above what they needed to do. They could have just gave people refunds and called it a day, but they went ahead and gave them legendaries. They, they allowed the raid to last longer. They extended the area to give people a chance to get another legendary. Um, and, you know, they, they they gave people in-game currency. Like, that's crazy. So, you know, $100 worth even. So, like, a, a pretty hefty amount of in-game currency to use. Now, I was I was not going to talk about this, but then this story came across my desk, and I I'm I'm still flabbergasted this is even happening. So this was posted originally by Polygon, and I'm not a huge fan of Polygon in general, but when you, they have a story like this, I got to give them props that they, they, they got a hold of some some information here that um, needed to be reported on. So good on them, and this was posted by Allegra Frank. So. Uh, it says that the title of the piece says, Some Pokemon Go Fest attendees are filing a suit against Niantic. Yes, a lawsuit has come of this. And it's not necessarily surprising a lawsuit has come because people try to sue over everything. It's what this lawsuit is for. So, um, just reading the story quick, you know, it says, Nearly two dozen Pokemon Go Fest attendees are filing a suit against Niantic, the game's developer, seeking travel reimbursement following last weekend's event, where most people were unable to play the game. Chicago-based attorney Thomas Zimmerman said he was contacted by Jonathan Norton, a Californian local who traveled to the area for the event. Since then, Zimmerman told Polygon that 20 or 30 others have joined the class action suit. I mean, there's a pretty significant difference in a class action suit between 20 and 30 people, but okay. Um, He paid to fly out to Chicago for the festival and had to wait several hours in line, just like everybody else, in order to get in. Zimmerman said. So everyone had to wait. <laughs> so I, I, the, no, there's no unfair treatment here, and there was no guarantee uh, of easy access into the event just because you bought a ticket. Um, I, I, there's been times when you go to concerts, like I'll buy a concert ticket. Everyone knows that concerts, at any big event, like e- even when I go to a Green Bay Packer game at Lambeau Field, I know I need to be there early. Otherwise, you get jammed up in the crowd outside, and it could take you an hour to get into the stadium, and you potentially could miss half the, half the football game. Um, you, you, this is just something you have to know when there's going to be a large crowd of people. Show up early, get on as quickly as you can, or get in line as quickly as you can so you can gain access. Anyways, it goes on to say that uh, when Norton eventually made it into Pokemon Go Fest, however, he, like everyone else, found out that the game wasn't working. Again, Pokemon Go was working, and 
here's what I'll say uh, about this and how I know it was working. Because while this fest was going on and I saw all these complaints coming in on Twitter and everything, I decided to go for a walk and play some Pokemon Go. And I had no problems. I connected fine. I, I was playing Pokemon Go like I normally do. I even went and captured a gym. Like, <laughs> Pokemon Go was working. This was literally an issue with feeding that many people through the cellular networks into Pokemon. Like, like it, it was what Niantic said. It was a congestion issue. Their servers were running. Um, but your, your, your providers were not able to push all those signals through to reach those servers. So, um, again, you know, what, whatever Pokemon go was working, but anyways, it says leaving him unable to catch the promised rare Pokemon, by the way, they were given the rare Pokemon for free. So anyways, uh, it says Zimmerman told Polygon that this was not against what Niantic advertised, which was that the Nintendies would get hard to find Pokemon again. They gave the attendees of the event a legendary that nobody else in the world got. They gave it to them. You didn't have to fight the raid battle for it. you, And you could have went and fought a raid battle and got an additional legendary. So, like, yeah, you couldn't connect. But guess what? They gave you a free legendary. So they, you might not have attained it in the way that it was advertised. But the, the complaint here is that attendees would get a hard-to-find Pokemon. They did get a hard to find Pokemon, so, oh, crazy. Anyways, it goes on to say, Niantic offered full refunds for their tickets on Saturday, just hours into the festival. All visitors also received $100 of in-game credit, as well as, and I, I just said this, the promised legendary Pokemon. So they all got the Pokemon anyways. So Niantic lived up to their advertisement and made sure everyone made good on this, despite the issues. Um, and it says, Zimmerman said that's not enough. Okay, even though that the basis of his complaints are on this. Uh, he says, For people like Norton and others who travel from out of town for Pokemon Go Fest, their expenses were much greater. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you chose to travel a, a great distance. Just like I chose to go to E3 uh, last year. And yeah, travel expenses plus hotel and all that stuff. I mean, it, it, I got into E3 for free. And I might, I don't you know, the food's whatever. You know, you pay for your food. That's fine. You know, you were going to have to eat <laughs> even if you were at home. But it was like $3,000 between the car rental, hotel, and plane tickets. So, I mean, okay. Anyways. Uh, so, it says, we're not seeking any relief with the aspect of failure to get legendary Pokemon because Niantic is offering that, he told us. But Niantic is not offering to refund people's travel expenses for coming to Chicago. Most of the people came from out of state, many from other countries. I talked to someone who flew in from Japan. Zimmerman insisted that his clients were asking for the amount of money spent on travel to be covered more than anything else. Although Niantic made promises that were not kept, he said, the fact of the matter is that the claimant said that the event did not provide the experience they expected. The issue is, what was promised? What was the incentive that people relied on and the representations that people relied on to buy a ticket and make travel plans and fly to Chicago to participate in this festival? Would that they have done that had they known that that was not going to be lived up to and they weren't going to get the experience that was represented? On the developer's part, Niantic did extend an amount of time and locations that rare Pokemon could be caught throughout Chicago after attendees couldn't manage to get the game working at the event itself. So, Niantic went above and beyond to try to make right by this. But this lawsuit, I mean, if you can't tell, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, it, I mean, imagine, I went to E3 and I, say I expected things. Say I expected there to be Super Mario Odyssey there last year. Say I expected these things and they didn't happen and E3 ended up not being what I expected. Would I turn around and sue E3, uh, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, for my travel expenses, for not providing uh, the event that I felt they were advertising to me? Um that it w didn't live up to my expectations. No, you're not going to win a lawsuit like that in court because he even said it was a chance to get a legendary. Well, you were given the legendary. Everyone got it. Niantic basically gave everyone who came to the event everything that they promised that they could have a chance to get while at the event. They just gave it to you. So, yes, you did not get it in the expected manner. You expected to do raid battles. You expected to walk around with hundreds and thousands of people and experience the new raids stuff i get it the they set expectations for how you were going to do it but just like any big event 
things don't always go according to plan. And usually that means you don't even get a refund, you know, because you still got something out of the event. So they're like, we're not going to go after him because of the legendary. Because, hey, we got the legendary. We just want our travel expenses back. But here's the thing. You can't have the legendary and your ticket refunded and all this stuff. And then also get your travel expenses back. Like, like how does that make any sense? So you... As an entitled person who had the money and could afford to make this kind of trip, because a lot of people can't even afford to make this kind of trip, uh, would are arguing that, oh, Niantic, thanks for all the free stuff, but hey, not only do we want all our money back, we want you to pay for, the, pay for us coming because we didn't get the things that you gave us in the way that we expected to get it. Even though if we weren't there, we would have never got these things in the first place. Um... <laughs> It's just ridiculous to me that this lawsuit's even happening. I honestly think this is going to end up getting thrown out in court. I, you know, this 30 people could increase to 100 or 200 or 1,000 people. I, it doesn't really matter how many people are, are saying it. I think any reasonable court, and this is the United States, right? So, like, people win lawsuits over really stupid stuff, and maybe they're going to end up winning this lawsuit, or maybe Niantic's just not going to want to go through the trouble because the overall travel expenses might just be, you know, a drop in the bucket for them, and they might just settle out of court and pay you know half of the the travel expenses back or whatever off, off the basis of lawyers saying hey if we take this a full trial like nintendo lawyers are going to involve the antics involved, involve we're probably going to lose because nintendo uh deals with this kind of stuff all the time uh people filing copyrights against them and, and finally like, oh you owe me money i mean imagine that that you bought splatoon uh 2 or splatoon 2 and you couldn't access the online features day one now imagine that you sued nintendo saying hey i bought this game expecting online features day one and you <laughs> You would lose in court so fast. It's not even funny because you did it. I mean, oh. Uh, I, I, I'm not excusing Niantic. They were definitely, uh, should have, they definitely should have planned this event better. I, I think Niantic, this is the first time they've done anything this crazy in terms of gathering people together. So to their credit on here, you know, outside of all the things they did to, did to you know, in remorse or in response, however you want to look at it, they... <laughs> they they probably didn't expect it to be this bad. They should have, but they didn't. Uh, but now they know, and if they do it again and it's this, it's this bad again, then we should really get mad at Nantic because it means they definitely didn't learn their lesson and they're just like throwing away uh, money and currency and, and all this stuff to people and wasting people's time. But um, like, I almost feel sympathetic towards Niantic here. And obviously a spokesperson for Niantic uh, did issue the following statement to Polygon. And it says Niantic does not comment on pending legal matters, which of course they don't. They're not going to say anything publicly unless it was going to help their case. And right now, you know, the case hasn't been seen by anyone. It might not have even been officially filed. You know, it's a pending lawsuit. Uh, so, you know, no court dates have been set. A judge might not even looked at it yet. Um... Anyways, it, uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Are you as flabbergasted as I am um, at how ridiculous this whole thing sounds? Like The more I read into the story, the more I, I just can't believe that this is happening. You know, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Maybe you sympathize. Maybe you understand. And the thing is, I understand paying a lot of money to travel travel to some place to go to something that ends up not being what you expected it to be. But that's kind of the risk you take. Um, in my mind, at least, when you pay money to travel to go do something, um, especially if it's something that require, requires an online connection. It, it's one of those things like common, common sense should tell you the risk that you're taking in doing this. Um, especially with a game like Pokemon Go that's had issues in the past. So it's not like Niantic has hid behind a wall and never had issues. Uh, so there wasn't some reasonable expectation of, of waiting in line and, and having issues. But uh, anyways... I am Nathaniel Rumble Chance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more videos like this. And as always, folks, I'll see you. God, I still can't believe this is happening. I'll see you in the next one.